Once again, Bitcoin is climbing higher after a number of big names predict the cryptocurrency to reach levels as high as $250,000. Can someone tell me where the party's at? Make it rain money from the sky, robberies in the back. Yeah. In the city, when bitty, hit it too fitty, when litty, and if you with me, we did it, yeah, that's a matter of fact. Yeah, ain't no racking racks, we be stacking sacks, where the party at? All week, no sleep, going back to back, like when that bitty dip, vroom, vroom, run it back. We has no chance, we'll make it. That's when we're dead, but it's shaking yeah. We old, never sold, be faithful Got a party, the fairy tale Can someone tell me where the party's at? Make it rain money from the sky, robberies in the back yeah. In the city, when bitty, here and too pretty, when litty And if you with me, we did it, yeah, that's a matter of fact That's a matter of fact Yeah, that's a matter of fact Just in, Bitcoin after party is going to be f***ing wild! See you in New York City, baby. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. It is 11 a.m. It's still a little early, but it is Monday. And uh, <clears throat> I figured I'd go live. I'm going to try and go live every day this week, but I can't make any promises. I We'll, we'll see what happens. My um, my my vertigo definitely improved. I was on an antibiotic for a little while, and I did go do a blood donation, which I hadn't done in quite some time. And um, sure enough, as soon as I did the blood draw, um, donated uh, here in Puerto Rico, I, almost instantly I started to feel a little better. By the next day, I was better, and by like the third day, uh, I was much better. So I, I definitely. Um, you know, it, it was it was rough going, and uh, I, I still don't feel quite a hundred percent, but it's definitely much better. It's very difficult to explain how that felt, uh, but not fun. I will also say I can see there's 29 viewers. You know, a, a big part of why I, I I just don't go live nearly as much every day is because since. Uh, since YouTube decided to terminate my channel and then bring it back uh, a couple days later without any kind of notification whatsoever, they said nothing, nobody told me anything, just my channel was gone and then it came back. And now I notice so many people saying they're not getting uh, notifications anymore. I, I don't really understand the rhyme or reason to what YouTube does. I at this point, I don't even really care. Uh, I'm just kind of over it all quite frankly I, I'm truly over it all uh, and <laughs> it's also disheartening I'm, I'm tired of rebuilding my channel over and over again uh, quite frankly and and I I don't know there are a lot of other platforms but they don't have the people they don't have uh, the viewership and you know for me to build uh, a channel uh, it just sounds silly. I, I'm just not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm moving forward. I'm really not. Uh, I feel like a big part of uh, a big part of what I've set out to do since 2017, for the most part, I've done. Um, you know, 2017 into 2018, I learned a lot. I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing uh, for the most part. I mean, I understood the technology. I understood where we were going. I understood the big picture. Um, but you know the the, the idea that um, you know this technology was going to change the world and make a bunch of people rich. Well, I mean it already has, and and I feel like I've stayed abreast of to a lot of that um, ever since. And I, I think I'm just reaching a point where I I'm not sure I might even just like start doing uh, a, like a newsletter, like a legit newsletter, um, where I'm actively researching. I almost want to start a newsletter specifically to find the flaws in um, new projects. And, and, I, and I don't mean that in a threatening way to, to crypto projects, but I just, I think if there's anything I've learned since 2017 in the crypto space is there are a lot of cash grabs. There are a lot of projects that come out guns blazing with big VC budgets trying to capitalize on a lot and um you know and and i just there, there are so many that i just don't necessarily like 
Um, so, and and I, I, I'm just still, I'm, I'm back to a position where I'm trying to find myself, quite frankly. What is my role here? What, what is my job here? Um, what do I get out of being here? Uh, where do I want to spend my time? How is my time going to be more effective throughout the bear market when it comes? So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I've got ideas. I will let everybody know um, that uh, it's been a while since I've talked about crow mining, um, but there are apparently, well, it's been very difficult to get miners, okay? Now, I, I, I generally don't talk about stuff, even if I'm a part of it, if I'm like a marketing partner or whatever, I don't generally talk about things unless it's like good, right? Um, like Crow Trader. But Crow Trader is solid. Uh, I love my Crow Trader bot. I truly do. I've only got three pairs running. Um, and believe it or not, they're profitable. Uni against BTC is down quite a bit. But I've done some uh, averaging down, you know? So like for this, this, this shows me uh, where I'm at, where my original entries are. Uh, my original entry, I think was, yeah, it looks like my original entry might have been back here. And I've averaged down a couple more times. It's currently down negative 17.66%. I can see all the times I've averaged down. I mean, I'm just taking a bath, but I'm gonna do a market by DCA. I just, DC, I just the dollar cost averaged. Now I'm only down 15.38% on the bot or on that particular trade. So, and, and well now it's, and it's a 14. So that's how I just average it down. So I can get out of that trade faster at profit when it starts to recover. And I'm showing you that for a reason. Like, you know, the bot, you can trade on Coinbase Pro, Binance US and Binance. Binance is running into a lot of problems. Um, I do love my bot, uh, but Crow Mining, I, it's, it's one of those things where if you really wanna get into mining, uh, because for whatever reason you want that upfront expense and then you want to drag that out into like, you know, ongoing revenue stream, like a passive revenue stream. Mining could be for you. I have, I have, I'm quite honest here. I, I enjoy logging into my mining wallet and seeing that I've got, you know, five or six grand worth of Bitcoin since the last time I checked and um, it's nice but I just don't know how profitable mining is compared to just buying Bitcoin and holding it. And I would suggest, even though it's been really difficult to get miners, um, I think that they just acquired 100 more units. And it's been like six months or longer since they, they've been able to get miners at hand. And, um, you know, if mining for whatever reason is like a really big thing for you, you just love it or you have some sort of tax reason or, or I, I don't know, whatever it is, apparently you can get some more miners. If I were you, I would join the Telegram group, ask the uh, ask Adam, ask these guys, you know, what's available and see what you can do. Uh, listen, I, I like mining and I think it's cool, but the way the mining industry is structured, it's almost structured to make sure that those selling the hardware, those that are doing the work on building the new chips, building the new structures for the mining equipment, all that, they're able to use this new powerful stuff long before the, the retail market is. And then they just sell it later. Like they can announce, hey, we're gonna get this big badass mining system up, um, but you can pre-order now and you'll get them in six months. Well, what's the hash rate at that point? When those are actually when those have actually launched, what's the hash rate um, going to be, and how diff what's the difficulty? There are just so many different variables. I would always once when I finally calculated a lot of this stuff, I figured out. Listen, if you're at the height of the market um, and you manage to buy some miners that are going to basically mine up uh, crypto, basically you're using profit, so it almost like it costs you nothing. You're using profit. You're mining throughout the bear market accumulating more and then you know maybe then that's worth it but I, I just i really don't know i really don't know uh i do like it it is fun but i'm not really mining anymore outside of what i've had now for quite a while at crow mining um as a matter of fact i even gave away my ethereum mining rig um to one of my neighbors so uh before we moved to puerto rico now i also want to make a quick announcement 
uh, for those of you that don't follow me on Twitter, uh, I am now officially a paid advisor for World Mobile Token and um, their efforts for basically building, um, you know, a telecommunications mesh networks in parts of different countries that are basically ignored by, um, you know, the major corporations uh, for whatever reason. I've had several meetings with these guys. I've talked to them. Uh, I know IOHK, uh, Cardano is involved with these guys. They've got all this stuff worked out. If you you're you're not even um, you're not even going to be able to get tokens if you're in the U.S. You're not uh, you're gonna they they have full um, AML KYC. They've got a whole vault. There's a whole acceptance process. I mean, these guys have spent a lot of money to be very much compliant. Um, and it, you know, will World Mobile Token work? That's the big question. Like, I um. As my advisory, they're not paying me in Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or cash or anything. They're paying me in World Mobile tokens, okay? They're giving me an allotment of tokens that's gonna enable me to launch my own Earth node in Puerto Rico. And a big part of my advisory role is to help establish a mesh network for those. There are over 400,000 people. They've done some legwork already in the research for Puerto Rico. Um, there's over 400,000 people in Puerto Rico that are without telecommunications functionality. I mean, ultimately it appears that, you know, they don't have internet, they don't have mobile service, they don't have a lot of the services that so many of us take for granted. And they really want me to help them. They're, they're focused primarily right now in parts of Africa. Um, and and we're, they're gonna, they told they promised me, they're like, listen, you come on board with us, we're gonna help you help Puerto Rico. Um, and because there's just a lot of stuff that I, I hate the, I don't like the idea that I'm here in Puerto Rico getting benefits, um, without basically giving more back, right? Like I want to get involved. I want to help those in Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, I don't speak Spanish. My wife, she's been doing very, very well, uh, learning Spanish and, and, but I really would love to see Puerto Rico benefit from my being here. And, and I think that's kind of where I'm at in my head. And that's one of the big deciding factors for me getting involved in this, uh, because I do believe that World Mobile Token will be able to help me do that. So um, I'll, and then I, I'm gonna be getting uh, another allotment of tokens that are ultimately gonna be locked up for two years, along with a lot of the, like the people and the team and everything else. It's been privately funded into the millions so far. So, uh, and, and, you know, I've talked to a lot of people and these guys, I mean, they seem cool and they just, they, they seem to have a genuine mission to try and accomplish a lot of things. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. It could all come crumbling down. I don't know. I'm not telling anybody to run out and try and figure out how to get your tokens or anything. I'm not, I'm not even doing that. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I'm hopeful that they are going to help me facilitate the means to help a lot of people in Puerto Rico. That's really it. What the, what happened? And the thing of it is, is if World Mobile Token bombs for whatever reason, I'm not getting squat because none of the tokens I'll ever see are gonna be worth shit anyway, okay? So I just wanna make that abundantly clear. Um, but I do believe that these guys are gonna do some pretty big things. And um, I, I'm definitely looking forward to being a part of it. So uh, we'll see, we'll see, I you know. Um, I, you know, I, I am, I kind of let IOHK and Charles Hoskinson, not that I've talked to him about this at all, cause I haven't, um, but I'm kind of, I know that, you know, if, if they're, if they're putting their badge of approval and working with these guys, then I'm, I'm assuming they're pretty legit. So I'm hoping that's the case. <laughs> and that all sounds very like one way, two way. It's really not. I just, I do think that these guys are going to do good things. But so far we haven't done anything yet. We're just getting started. So of course I will be letting everybody know every step of the way as more things happen. Uh, I would suggest going into the docs. It's worldmobiletoken.com. Read the token paper, the white paper, the deck, all that. Read up on it. Uh, educate yourself on the project um, and uh, just kind of stay, stay in the loop. Uh, personal questions. Uh, I did just get my hair did. I got my beard trimmed, got all, got all prettied up for you fine folks. Uh, and yes, I have been losing some weight. I, I got up to 307 pounds when we got to this island and um, I, I was just gaining weight quickly. And so, um, and that, you know, for me, you know, being seven feet tall, 300 pounds, I mean, not, 
I'm <clears throat> I'm supposed to be getting to 250, and I was and I was going the other way, and so I, I basically just started dieting again. I've been waiting to get this vertigo stuff completely resolved so that I can start working out, doing some more stuff, taking walks, uh, and uh, because I but I have I've lost like 10 pounds in the past like week and a half, um, just basically limiting what I'm eating. So, uh, yeah, I just, I want to get skinny and pretty again. I don't have that much time. I'm, I'm, I'm in my forties now, so I have to, <laughs> I figure I've got like 10 years to have any real control over the way I'm built. I don't know. I could be wrong. So we're going to start off into some stuff. And here's the thing. But before I even get into a lot of this, I want to let everybody know that, um, you know, here we are where it's June 28, 2021. And if you've been following me for any length of time and you've been watching my videos, I've basically been saying, listen, I think we're gonna have a double peak. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I say, I get so many people, some people are saying, um, uh, you know, <laughs> some people are saying, oh, Crow, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, we're, we're in a bear market now, everything's going down, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. Uh, I actually believe differently and I, I believe that we are in a double peak similar to 2013 and 2014 um, and I and I think that we're gonna start seeing a lot of craziness as we continue moving forward throughout the rest of 2021 I think that the stock market is is I just think that there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes and I can't even get into a lot of that stuff because I don't want YouTube to just shut me down again for no reason. Um, you know, we're, we're entering a world where there's no longer very much freedom of speech, in my opinion. I mean, you can say whatever you want, um, but there's always going to be a drastic circumstance, uh, in my opinion. I, it just seems like we're just being silenced at every turn for any conceivable reason, whether it's because... Uh, this group of people is going to get triggered or that group of people is going to get mad or uh, I don't know. It's just we're, we're, we're getting to a point where everybody is just a gray alien. Okay. Like where everything has to be extremely neutral. Everybody has to uh, walk the narrow line, do as they're told, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just getting insane. I mean, truly, it's getting insane. It almost feels like the world around me has become a bad dream um, that makes very little sense. And, uh, you know, I, I've had talks with Mark Moss and I've had talks with a lot of other people and they're basically saying, you know, um, this happens like every hundred years or so. Like the, when the new, when there's a big currency change or regi a regime change, uh, um, you know, when you go from um, feudalism to a monarchy to a democracy to a whatever it is. like all these different phases of society over time but there's definitely one thing that I believe to be absolutely true as we continue moving forward and that is that blockchain will be the root and the foundation for everything we do and touch in the future everything um, you know, while so many of us have been ushered into the crypto space on the belief that, you know, crypto's private, um, you know, crypto's decentralized, crypto's X, Y, Z, and a lot of that stuff is true, depending on what blockchain you're talking about. But the other side to that is, is that the vast majority of the cryptocurrencies out there, whether it be Bitcoin or, or Ethereum or Cardano or anything, all transactions are traceable. And which is I personally I think it's a good thing I mean you know if you're not up to no good I don't really see what that would matter too much other than um companies are going to know ever more you ever look back and you watch the movie Minority Report and I remember when they were creating that movie they were asking all these futurists what where they saw the world in 20 years 30 years 50 years so forth and so on and they took a lot of the best ideas and they and they ultimately brought them all together in one movie the minority report and i believe that so much of that we're already seeing today you know like in that movie he's walking through like a plaza or whatever and he's his eyes are being scanned 
and they're they're acknowledging who he is and what products he might be out of that he has at his refrigerator you know that sort of thing that stuff is absolutely reality it's already reality to some degree but it's going to be much more so sooner than later and i and i think that you know this this article here on um on uh, ETF trends, the SEC does not plan to weigh in on crypto regulation in 2021. Uh, you know, they're basically saying, listen, this is, you know, cryptocurrency is more of a commodity than anything. And, that, and, and, and it looks like the SEC is planning on kind of taking a step back. And I found that, I find that very interesting um, because that, that, that's actually pretty substantial. I mean, that's a pretty big deal right the sec announced this year's regulatory agenda and while it includes plans to investigate cybersecurity and regulate short sales there was no mention of bitcoin or cryptocurrencies generally speaking and what i'm what i'm seeing though is that binance is taking a big a bunch of hits we're seeing a lot of different stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this. Um, Bitcoin loses momentum again. Now this is back. This is June 27. JP Morgan expects Bitcoin to plunge to 23,000 before its next rally. I can get into some of the details here, but this this isn't happening so far. And I feel like anytime JP Morgan tries to say something negative, generally the opposite happens. Uh, and and so far this has been the case. This was on the 27th. It's only been a day, but We've been getting a little bit of a rally today. Um, I believe we're going to start seeing a little bit more of an uptick. Uh, and then I know a lot of people have been calling for like a $24,000 Bitcoin. And uh, and that's still possible. We don't know. I'm going to go into some of that stuff a little later. This may be a little bit of a longer um, a longer stream. We'll see. Because I'm just going to ramble and I'm going to talk. And I'm just going to share my thoughts. I don't know if I'm going to be coming back live tomorrow or not. Um, the world, world's biggest crypto exchange is running into trouble everywhere. Nothing symbolizes cryptocurrency's troubles with regulators as well as the travails of Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange by volume. This pack, past week alone, it ran into obstacles in Japan, the UK, and the Canadian province of Ontario. Uh-huh. Well, we all know the, a lot of stuff's going on in Canada right now. On Friday, the Japanese Financial Services Agency issued Binance its second warning in three years that the company isn't registered to operate in Japan. This is happening in Japan, it's happening in Canada, it's happening in the UK. For whatever reason, out of nowhere, all these countries are coming together, pointing the finger at Binance, which tells me, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just some idiot on the interwebs. But something tells me if Binance comes out of this, they're gonna be working very, very closely with the governments of multiple countries. Uh, and, and, I, and I think that what that means, I can't even get into, but I mean, I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that there. I just wanted that to be a little bit of food for thought because I see a lot of things changing in the crypto climate as we get closer to the peak of this market. Major cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, unfazed after UK regulators ban Binance. Um, the UK's financial regulator has banned Binance from operating in the country, joining Canada and Japan this weekend as the third major market causing trouble for the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, regulators around the world crack down on the industry. So the SEC is, is appearing to take a slight step back, leaving everything in the hands of, you know, um, like the commodities regulators. Yeah, and everybody's kind of going in, like governments are going in on like the biggest exchange in the world, Binance. And, and I really just think that this is all kind of posturing in a way to basically get them to uh, to play ball in a, in, a, in a bigger way. And I think they're probably going to say, hey, we're going to let you operate, but we want X, Y, Z to start happening. Um, and who knows? Who, who knows exactly what all that entails? But I definitely th see things a lot of I see a lot of things changing on Binance in the future, probably not so distant future. 
So just understand that. Here's the thing. <laughs> when, when there's a lot of things, isn't there? Uh, aren't there? Um, I'll move on first. Institutional money moving to Cardano and Stellar as Bitcoin and Ethereum take a breather. breather. Now, this is all the way back from June 19th. But this goes to show that in the midst of all of this downtrending uh, that's been going on lately, there's been a lot of money that was being pulled out of Ethereum and put into Cardano and XLM. Why? I believe this was in part because of the World Economics, uh, the World Economic Forum's PDF guide to cryptocurrencies, and ADA and XLM were two of the cryptocurrencies out of six that it basically, um, I guess you could say, you know, they basically listed them as as projects that they, I assume that they like them or they wouldn't be in their freaking guide. And I think that of all the cryptocurrencies that were named, I think Cardano and XLM seemed to look the most promising to a lot of the people that were reading that crypto guide. And so we started seeing uh, a bit of a transition from Ethereum into these. So that's cool. We'll see. Cardano hits new milestones, surpassing 650,000 staking addresses. That's huge. Cardano ADA staking addresses have hit over 662,000. 50,000 new staking addresses have come in for ADA in the last three weeks alone. Data indicates $29 billion in funds have been staked in total, more than 70% of the total supply. That's insane. Look at that. I like that picture. Man, I would make that a desktop background. That's really cool. Um... So, I mean, that's that's just good news. And then uh, another big Cardano deal is in the works in Africa. Here's the thing, folks, we're gonna start seeing a lot of this. We're gonna start seeing a lot of this. This is just from June 21st. The end of April saw Cardano developers Input Output Global announced significant partnership deals with the governments of Ethiopia and Tanzania. But according to IOG's Director of African Operations, John O'Connor, another significant deal is in the works. Like the Tanzania tie-up, this will likely feature cooperation between a local government and the private sector, with IOG technology bridging the partnership. An additional 1 million users coming on board the Cardano network. These guys are doing it right. Now, you know, I actually had Mark Moss and his family over, over to the house uh, last week, and we talked a lot about El Salvador. Now, Mark Moss has become quite the Bitcoin maximalist. Um, and more power to him. And there were some things that we disagreed on. Um, he doesn't, he, he's not necessarily a big proponent of Cardano because he thinks that, you know, like a lot of the maxis that everything that's not Bitcoin is worthless. Um, and, and so we, we had a very um, interesting, I wouldn't even call it an argument because I just more or less let him talk. Uh, he's such a brilliant guy. He knows so much. Um, you know, I, I, he's one of the very few YouTubers I actually watch on a fairly consistent basis because I just, I love his ideas. Um, I, I love Mark and he's a hell of a good guy. His wife is beautiful and sweet and his kids sweet. Um, you know, they all played and every, everybody was having a good time while he and I are basically just kind of going back and forth on, on crypto. And, uh, you know, I, I think that to some degree, Bitcoin probably will be like and continue to be the, the big grand poobah. But I also believe that there's a lot of there's a lot to be said about um, technology that is taking things to another level. Uh, you know, Bitcoin may have been, may have been started um, to set off this whole cyberpunk craze and to kind of drive the train, so to speak. But ultimately, I, I think that it's going to be one big altcoin that's going to take everything else by storm. And and I, when I look at so many of the projects out there, I mean, there are over 9,000 of these things now. And when I think of like, what project do I believe is truly going to continue changing the world? I believe it's Cardano. I just do. I, I For a lot of different reasons, and some of them not that great. Because if there is a pro, it's funny because I've made comments in the past semi tongue in cheek about Cardano becoming like a one world currency because it, it, the, it's going to have the ability to power so much. And, um, 
and and do so in a way that I'm sure the governments will approve of. I mean, the fact that it's been listed as one of the six projects that's ultimately endorsed by the WEC or the WEF, uh, I, you know, I, I guess the race is still on, right? I mean, we're talking about something that still hasn't launched smart contracts yet. So, but I, I do believe that the time is coming. And here's the thing overall, before I get too deep into a lot of this, um, I believe that the time, you know, the question is here we are in June, um, we're getting ready to head into July, which is where I think we're going to start seeing some significant um, price action increase, some more uptrends. I think we're currently in a reaccumulation phase. Um, and I think that a lot's going to happen. And some people are going to ask themselves, is it too late for me to get in? Is it too late for me to make money? Is it too late? Is it too late? And, and the answer to that question is no, not as long as you're willing to do your research um, and you're willing to put in that work. Because there are so many people between now and the end of this year that are going to get burned. I mean, we just saw Mark Cuban. You know, I don't, is he a billionaire? I mean, I, I'm not even 100% sure. The guy's filthy rich, and he just lost millions investing in some shitty DeFi project. And um, and he was basically embarrassed by that because he's out there pumping it and talking about it, acting like he's some big authority on the space when he doesn't really even know what the fuck he's doing, quite frankly. And, you know, I think a lot of these guys, they're trying so hard to become an authority in the in the cryptocurrency space and, and they're trying to flex their billionaire muscles like, I'm super rich, listen to me, I know what's good. Well, didn't work out for Mark Cuban. And the, 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 the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, they're calling, well, we need more regulation. You know, like somebody like Mark Cuban comes in with his big money balls and he says, hey, I'm throwing my money around. And then if something bad happens, well, we need more regulation. Okay, maybe we do to some degree, or you just need to be more uh, educated on the space and what's possible and what's to come and, and, and all of these things. Because I don't really see a lot of that. Um, I just see these guys running around trying to act like authority figures that have been basically reading the, the, the mainstream headlines about crypto for six months and then all of a sudden they think they know best. Now, um, and I like Mark Cuban. Uh, you know, I think he's arrogant. I think he's a lot of things that people say uh, but I also think he's a fun guy and I think ultimately he does probably mean well I think he's just trying to live his life and have a good time at it. I don't fault anybody for that um, But I just I don't like the Elon Musk's coming into the space um, and, and just flexing their money balls and, and trying to say, you know, listen to me I know what I'm talking about because I'm rich. You don't know how these people got rich You don't you don't know. We know how we know how Mark Cuban. I think Mark Cuban got wealthy in the, probably one of the most legitimate methods out there, to be quite honest. Um, and he's the biggest maverick of them all. You know, Elon Musk. I like Elon Musk. I like his story, but I also think that his story, to some degree, is also very misleading. And I don't really think he understands. Um, maybe he does. I don't know. I mean, the guy is undoubtedly brilliant. But to to be I question somebody's motives when they're pumping Dogecoin, okay? I mean, that's all there is to it. And and I and I can't help but wonder how many people were hurt by him pumping Dogecoin, whether it's on Twitter or elsewhere. And the, the, the truth is though, is there is still so much opportunity for somebody to take very little and turn it into a hell of a lot. The problem now is though, that compared to 2017, when there were like 2,600 to 3,000 crypto projects, there are almost 10,000 today. Now, granted, the cream is gonna rise to the top, generally does, but we've also seen the cream rise to the top for a day and fall right back down to the sea floor. So you have to be very, very cautious and very careful, which is one of the reasons why I've been considering starting a, a newsletter, not to pump projects, but to basically research projects and and do some due diligence and let people know what i'm finding and what i think um may pose as a potential problem for one project or another everybody out there does all these like you know buy this buy that buy this it's going to go to the moon and so forth and so on i actually just feel better t trying to educate people on some of the cons of some of the projects because i think that so much of that is ignored and if you look at you know, YouTube culture, crypto culture, 
you know, crypto Twitter, all of that. People get views, likes, and social engagements engagements significantly more when they're pumping something because everybody wants their bags pumped and everybody's willing to support um, a vehicle that's pumping their bags than they are like anything that's like negative, right? I mean, that's just kind of the nature of things. And so, um, you know, again, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna be doing moving forward. I just know that I'm, I'm not nearly as impressed by the majority of projects out there today as I was back in like 2017, 2018. Um, I think I've learned so much more about the market cycles. I've learned so much, I, basically I've learned enough to know that I don't know shit, but what I do know, I don't necessarily like that much. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to make money, okay? I mean, everybody knows that. You know, there's a very good chance that if you stay out of something that could be rug pulled, um, you know, DeFi, people make a lot of money in DeFi, but a lot more people, uh, a lot of people lose money too. It's just very dangerous. You know, you never want to invest more than you can afford to lose. You don't want to do anything shady. You don't want to get wrapped up in projects just because they're pumping themselves. Uh, there's just a lot to it. And, and, I, and I really think that, I think a lot of newcomers to the space are very likely gonna get burned in a lot of different ways. And, you know, I, I get companies that pay me for segments and stuff all the time, and I have no way of knowing if, if any of these companies are good or bad or ugly or what. I, I have no idea, it's impossible to know. Um, but it's like any company, you know, there could, there could be a cereal company that comes out promoting a new uh, brand of cereal. I have no way of knowing if it has, you know, strychnine in the flakes or like, well, I have no idea, I don't know. Um, and and that's, that's, a, that's the responsibility, uh, you know, to, to a big extent when you're trying to invest in crypto, you need to make sure you understand what you're putting your money into and the risks associated with it. You know, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. I, you know, the, the, but, the, but the truth is, is that people who are getting into the space right now, um, even if we get a continuation uh, down, which I don't necessarily think we're gonna see, I think we're actually gonna start inching our way up again from here. Um, we're probably gonna inch up a bit and then I can see us ticking back down. Like this is Ethereum. Um, <clears throat> I could even see us potentially bouncing off of this um, moving average and then coming back down and, and then setting up because we need to set up new support resistance, right? Before we start to really take off again. And I can see that happening. But you're gonna see Ethereum's got a green light. Ethereum's basically saying, yeah, we're, we're getting ready to go. Uh, Cardano has dropped down while Ethereum has, but Cardano's still back above its original all-time high, which I'm fine with. Uh, and and it, it could very well be loading up. So we'll see, but if you look at Cardano's valuation against Ethereum right now, we just, we got a blood diamond. Uh, and this is market cipher for those of you guys that don't know. Um, I love the indicator. Uh, you know, it has its haters because there are, you know, people are like, oh, I can take 15 different indicators that are all free and they're, they're a little different, but they all work the same. And it's like, okay, cool, then do that, that's fine. Uh, but for people that want, you know, <clears throat> it's like I, I can buy a car with four wheels and a steering wheel for $500, but that doesn't necessarily mean I don't want it to, uh, you know, maybe I want extra room. Maybe I want a Mercedes emblem on the front. So I'm willing to pay more. I don't know. To each their own. But anyway, I do like Market Cipher. Um, so anyway, I did get the, you get in the blood diamond. So that's basically saying that Ethereum is taking off and leaving Cardano behind. But I think that's going to be short lived. Now, if we're looking at Bitcoin's price action right now, this is on an eight hour chart. You can obviously see the Wyckoff distribution that we were in um, previously. And right now, I think we're in a reaccumulation phase. And then I think we're gonna go into uh, you know, a bigger accumulation phase where we peak out somewhere above $100,000. How long that takes, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, this here, this is the pi cycle top indicator that I love. Um, you can see this was basically the peak of the of this current cycle. And as the price has continued dropping down, you can see the spread growing and growing and establishing basically a new wave 
um, to move up again in the market. This was the last one. This was 2017. So we got that crossover and then boom, we got that spread. So we're establishing that spread now, but I think we're going to get a double peak and we're going to end up somewhere up here by the end of it all. So, you know, and if you know anything about crypto from back in the day, you know that, you know, in 2017, you know, the crypto market was such that you could pretty much throw money at just about anything. Um, and, and so few of us understood that the market was going to come to an end. We thought, wow, this is new technology. This is new everything. It's going, it's growing. It's going to take, take over the world. <laughs> it's like dumb kids playing with matches around gasoline. We didn't really know what we were playing with. We didn't really know what we were talking about, but we do now. We know a lot more now. And the thing of it is too, is a part of me has to kind of wonder how much do we still not know? So let's take a look. Um, I don't think we bottomed at 30 grand. We went below that. I think we hit about 27,000 in this, in this peak uh, or in this, in this bottom. Um, so, all right. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to leave that there. Uh, I had much more of a sentiment, but the more I talk, the more I feel a little like, oh, wow, I'm not 100% yet. Uh, but yeah, I do believe that this is going to be a double peak bull market. And I think we're getting ready to start trending up. And um, yeah, I mean, let me know your thoughts in the comments below about everything and anything I talked about. I, I really do love when I'm like really bored, honestly, often if I'm like sitting, relaxing, chilling in the bath, I go to my video that I did most recently and I read all the comments. I don't respond because I always get these impersonators. Um, I love how like, you know, <laughs> you can say fart on YouTube and they might not like it and pull your video down yet nobody seems to care about the people impersonating as youtubers trying to scam as many people as possible in the comments i'll just i'll never understand that but i guess it's just it is what it is i don't know um crow you're looking relaxed and healthy good to see you my man thanks uh i you know i think i am looking a little bit better uh my wife certainly seems to like my haircut um <laughs> so uh and um you know my complexion i guess has been getting better and and all that i think it has been a little healthier so yeah due diligence yeah I, you know I, if, I, if i leave you with anything in this video it's going to be this um always do your due diligence don't ever run around the interwebs watch some youtuber who seems to know what he's talking about tell you to buy a particular coin okay Chances are he's already got a shit ton of it. He bought a lot l longer, like like he's been holding it a while, and um, you know they're they're looking to you to pump it for him. I mean, the the very nature of crypto YouTube to some degree is it's like a war, right? Um, it's like I know I know Bitboy holds a bunch of Ethereum, okay, and I hold a bunch of Cardano. And we're, we're going at it all the time. Like Cardano's gonna take over. And he's like, no, Ethereum's gonna take over. And this is why, and then we go back and forth. And it's kind of like that. And I, Ben and I are friends, like I love Ben. So like, that's not a knock. It's just a hypothetical kind of like thing. But that goes on amongst a lot of the different YouTubers. Somebody all, like I attached myself and got big into Cardano back in 2017 when nobody else out there gave two shits. And if they did, they were talking trash about it. And, and I don't mind going against the grain. I don't mind being my own person. I don't mind being wrong. Um, but that's been a fight for years. And I think that's a fight I definitely expect to win. Uh, this is this is going to be a, a five round war, not a three round exhibition. Uh, and uh, I think by the end of it all, I, I, I definitely expect to, to come out the champion. But in the meantime, we're going to get a lot of craziness. Uh, and so we'll just have to see. I guess all I'm gonna try and say, cause I know I'm all over the place in this video. It's been so long since I've been live. Um, just be careful, never invest more than you can afford to lose. Because seriously, in, in where we're at in the market right now, you can average into something, hold it, educate yourself and accumulate more over time. And you'll likely do very, very, very well. Uh, you don't have to jump right into something just because somebody you saw on the interwebs told you it was cool understand why it's cool understand why it may not be so cool um do your due diligence okay and uh with that i bid you adieu have a good afternoon i've got to go eat something i'm starving but i love you guys and i'll see you again very soon crow your